Hi, it's Rob from Skitsier Genius. I just want to show you how I troubleshoot attachments before I actually even try to run one of our harnesses or controllers. So I get a lot of used attachments that come in. And the first thing I want to do is most of the time there's no schematic, there's no, there's nothing on, on how the thing operates. And so what I'll do is I'll actually sit down and I'll map out the solenoids before I do anything. And I'll verify that they actually work. So what I do is I just have a little battery and you can just use a little motorcycle battery. I have a couple of probes on it. In this case, a couple of alligator clips. I make up my own little harnesses so I can plug it in quickly. But just to show you what, what to do, I'll um, literally go here and I put a pin in here just so I can identify my ground. And I just know what the grounds are. Um, but generally, if you have to get into the harness, it's the black wire. The wiring on these are not like household wiring. So if you see a black and a white, it's not that the black is hot and the white is neutral. That's not how it works in, in uh, industrial equipment as well as automotive. The black is your ground, the white or the red is always your hot or your 12 volts. Okay, so be very aware of that. On the coils that we use, in, in, uh, and we usually use uh, Hydroforce coils, um, they have a diode, a two-way diode in there, a zener it's called and, and the the beauty of that is you can actually revo reverse polarize them and it won't smoke the the diode but on the bobcat coils you have to be very careful you have to really look at what you're doing you see a black and a white wire make sure you hook the ground up to the black wire and the uh, the 12 volts up to the white wire otherwise you're going to see smoke coming out of there and i will show you that in a minute because we do have a smoke coil here that we can have some fun with but generally what I, what I would do is if I just have a single cartridge, and this is a cartridge, you'll hear me talk about these. Um, this has two functions. So generally, like let's say it's a broom. You make the broom go left, you make the broom go right. But it's done off the same cartridge because what the cartridge does is it diverts the oil in one direction or diverts the oil in the other direction. And it uses two coils to do that. One coil makes it go left, the other coil makes it go right. So I've got a, a wire just connected on here. And I'm just gonna show you, I'm just gonna fire it. You can hear that clicking sound. I always tell people it sounds like just a light tap, tap, tap coming off uh, like a ball peen hammer. So you can do a lot of these tests without even actually running the machine. As long as you have the key on, you can run the machine, kind of run through, hit all the controls and hear if you see, or listen for the noise and, and listen for that tapping sound. If you can't hear it, um, that's what I do is before I even get the attachment on the machine is I run through it with this. So here's a, here's a single uh, cartridge with two solenoids on here that I'll show you in the next one. So here's a, a, an open center, multiple function uh, control block. And this is actually out of one of the skid steer solutions or Etera boom mowers. And in this case, I've got an eight pin connected. I know where my ground is. So I put my ground in and then I just like to put a, pin on here it just makes it easier for me to grab like I said you can use probes I have another battery at home that I've cut an old set of probes off and I just have the battery mounts on and I just use these because then you can you can usually push them in the holes and it holds for you but in this case I, I do this you can hear it's very light tap 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 sound and you can actually take these off so just take the nut off here and you can hold it away. Like if you want to see it actually work and it'll actually try and pull your finger. So you don't have your finger in there. It'll try and it'll try and pinch your finger, but you can feel it, it pulling. And then what you do is you just mark it. So that it's, it's this idea. So you can have it on the, uh, on the machine, the machine, the hydraulics running and you touch each one of these. And as it fires, you just take a, a Sharpie and you write on the side. Okay. This makes the, my broom turn left. So if this one makes it turn left, then the bottom one's gonna make it turn right. They're always in pairs like that. They never mix match them in that way. So here's another test that I do. I'll just apply power to it. And you could just take a, a wrench and you can feel the, mag the magnetism here. So all this is, is just a coil of wire. So you've got current coming through here, going around this coil of wire. It creates a magnetic field. That magnetic field pulls on this cartridge, either one way or the other and causes it to divert the oil. So that's how these work. So it's actually really simple just to troubleshoot these. If you've got a dead one, it's not gonna work like this. It's just gonna, it's gonna let the thing drop. So if I just release the power, it drops. 
Okay, and that's the same effect if you had, uh, um, if the thing was, was dead. And generally, these run uh, anywhere between eight ohms. So if you have a meter and you wanna measure them, they generally run between eight and 14 ohms. So if I put this on a meter, what am I at here? So I'm at 9.1 on this one. A second ago, it was actually 14 when it was cooler. I've been running it now for a few minutes. So yeah, I'm right around nine ohms. The one that I know is bad is this one. And I just like to speed things up by using the proper connectors. It's just easier. If I measure this one, sitting right at two ohms. So that's almost a dead short. So now if I was to apply power to this one, get a close up here so you can see what's gonna happen. But... Hopefully it doesn't blow up in my face. See that? <laughs> so that's what a bad coil looks like. And there'll be a smell. It's a burned plastic smell. So if you get up next to your attachment and you suspect there's something wrong, the very first thing I do is I give it a little sniff and if I smell that burned plastic smell, then I know that's exactly what's wrong and I'm gonna need to change that coil. These coils are really simple to change. There's just a nut on the top here. I've got them all loosened off, of course, but generally there's just a little nut on here. You take this off, you slide the coil out and you put a new one on here. They generally, if you, if you don't buy them from Bobcat, you can get them in the open market for about $40. I think we even have them on our website for $40, $45, something like that. Um, and you can just change them out. You, you do want to verify the part number, make sure that it's correct, just in case the wiring's backward or it's got the, it's got the wrong diode set up in it. But that's it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward to, to figure these things out. I, I go through, I map my attachments before I ever do anything else with the harnesses. And then that way I can, I know 100% the attachment works. Now I work on the harness. I've checked all the harness. I've done the pinouts on it and driven the solenoids from the harness. So I know that works. Then I'll go to the machine side. I'll take my meter or a test light. I'll connect it to the ground and I'll touch each pin with somebody sitting inside the cab, just touching each one of the buttons to make sure that all works. Generally, if nothing works, you've got a dead fuse. If something works, you could have an older machine where the switches are stuck. And lots of times you can just open up the handle, um, get some electronic cleaner, spray it in there, and the thing's good as gold. It's up and ready, ready to go. Other times you may have a damaged switch and you may have to change that switch in the handle. Unfortunately, a lot of times that means changing the handle, not just the switch. So just be aware of that. Um, you can bypass those things and, and just add secondary switches on there if you just maybe only have an attachment that only needs two switches. And again, Schizio Genius is the place to find all of these things. We make all kinds of aftermarket accessories for you to be able to run your attachments easily and inexpensively. <laughs>